Hi, I'm Irmina Van Dyken, MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people find a healthy lifestyle through a whole food plant-based diet. Today we're going to talk about sulforaphane. We know that many foods contain phytochemicals, compounds that are bioactive that work in our body to create change. One of the bioactive mechanisms that's a hot topic of research these days is chemoprevention, the mechanism of preventing cancer. This leads us to sulforaphane, one of these bioactive compounds. It's naturally found in cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kohlrabi, and Brussels sprouts. Recent studies have shown that sulforaphane may prevent a variety of cancers such as breast, prostate, colon, skin, lung, stomach, and even bladder cancer. It's also been shown to be promising in the treatment of heart disease, neurodegenerative disease such as dementia, and diabetes. How is it possible that one compound can do all of that great stuff? And how can, you, how can we get more of this compound in our daily dietary mix? Well, in order to talk about that, we have to briefly discuss the science behind this all. I know it's complicated, but bear with me for a few minutes. It will be worth it in the end. Let's take broccoli sprouts, the food that has the highest concentration of sulforaphane. You see, sulforaphane is a relatively unstable compound. Sulforaphane is stored as its stable precursor, glucoraphanin. So when we chew on those delicious broccoli sprouts, the glucoraphanin is converted to sulforaphane with the help of an enzyme called myrosinase. This enzyme myrosinase we make in our bodies, but it's also present in different portions of the plant that we are eating. So the more we chew our food, the more myrosinase is freed up. Once the sulforaphane is present in our bodies, it begins to target many pathways, including the NRF2 pathway. Not to get too technical or anything, but NRF2 is a transcription factor, and it's considered to be a master regulator of the environmental stress response. In other words, it's what we call a cytoprotective pathway. Under conditions of electrophilic, oxidative, and inflammatory stress, NRF2 travels into the cell nucleus and becomes deactivated. When the NRF2 pathway is activated by sulforaphane, this triggers the release of powerful antioxidants and detoxifiers known as phase two enzymes. These enzymes have three main functions, detoxification, antioxidation, and anti-inflammation. More specifically, they prevent the cell against damage from reactive oxygen species and inflammation. So why do we care about this? Sulforaphane is showing promise in the areas of cancer prevention, heart disease, dementia, autism, and diabetes, like we talked before. The highest concentrations of glucosinolates, and therefore sulforaphane, are found in the dormant and germinating seeds of the broccoli plant. We know that two to three day old broccoli sprouts contain 10 to 100 times higher levels of glucoraphanin than mature broccoli. How is this different from other antioxidants? Well, the antioxidant effect lasts longer. A typical antioxidant chemical lasts about three hours. We know that sulforaphane lasts up to 72. It's also a stronger antioxidant than vitamin C and vitamin E, as well as many of the other plant polyphenols that we know as our common antioxidants. So what's the nutritional profile of raw broccoli chopped? Well, a cup of raw broccoli has only 31 calories, two grams of protein, so it's a relatively high protein food, and it has 15 whopping milligrams of glucoraphanin, the precursor to sulforaphane. So how can we get more sulforaphane in our food and in our diet, therefore in our bodies? Well, the top 10 sulforaphane containing foods are number one, broccoli sprouts, number two, broccoli, raw or lightly steamed. You can even microwave it, but don't boil it because the nutrients are leached into the water. Number three is cauliflower, four, Brussels sprouts. Again, raw is best. You can lightly steam them or saute them, that's okay, but do not overcook them. Number five is savoy cabbage, six is red cabbage, Seven is kohlrabi, eight's gonna be kale, nine collard greens, and 10, which you may find surprising, is horseradish. So those are the top 10 sulforaphane containing foods. I hope you can find a way to implement them into your daily lifestyle routine and your diet.